Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldon. Today we're going to finish up Death Note with Volumes 10 to 12. So we finally reached the end. Also, check out my reading of my realistic fiction sh short story, Homesickness, pages 1 to 3. Well, the next manga series that I'm going to review is Dawn of the Arcana. I'm going to go back to more medieval fantasy type. Um, you know, it, it's uh, Dawn of the Arcana is a... It's a good manga series, um, not too long if you're looking for a, a, a good fantasy and whatnot. Um, it, it's it's pretty solid. So next week, I'll have a manga review for Dawn of the Arcana, volumes 1 to 3, a reading of Homesickness, pages 4 to 6, and a movie review for a Chinese film uh, that I'm going to watch in theaters this week, The Devotion of Suspect X. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismodon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, uh, this is how it's going to work. There will have uh, major spoilers. Uh, I'm going to recap volumes 10, 11, and 12. So, I'll do a recap of volume 10, do, give my thoughts on the volume, then do the same for 11. And for the final volume, uh, volume to, uh, 12. So, let's get right to it. Uh, volume 11, or volume 10, excuse me. Uh, volume 10 begins with Demagawa in a helicopter and a crowd of people storming Nier's hideout. Nier and his team drop money from the building and the crowd, including Demagawa, go after the money. Nier and the SPK escape wearing riot squad gear. But uh, Nier still has Mogi confined. He says that he'll get at least one of them, meaning the task force, to come over to his side. Light plans to use someone for when he loses Misa or is forced to lose Misa. He looks into a man named Teru Mikami. Nier contacts El and tells him that Mogi has died from a heart attack. Nier then tells the other members of the task force that they can contact him if they have the slightest suspicion that a member of the task force is Kira. Light sends Misa a message telling her to abandon ownership of the notebook. He will give the notebook to somebody else. Light tells the other task force members that anyone who wants to cooperate with Nier may do so. So, Aizawa calls Nier. Nier tells him that he lied about Mogi. Mikami then gets the notebook and burns the letter that it came with. Nier questions the 13 day rule. Aizawa tells Nier that the original L can find two people. He also reveals the stunt involving Suichiro uh, uh, Yagami that uh, proved the suspects is innocence. I didn't say any names but it's where Yagami was going to shoot Light and Misa in the car and uh, Suichiro didn't die so that is how they proved that. Um, Light and Misa were not Kira, apparently, which obviously wasn't the case. Uh, Nier concludes that the new L is Light Yagami. Um, comes to the conclusion because of the actions from his father and what he said made it seem like the person that he was going to kill was someone that was close to him. The closest person to him, really. Outside of his wife and daughter's light. So they take Mogi and Aizawa back to the airport. And Melo and another person with him is following them. 
Aiza and Mogi decide to keep an eye on Light and Misa. Mogi stays with Misa while Aiza stays with Light. Aiza tells Light that Mogi is alive and that he went to see Nier. So Mello's associate, his name is Matt, is tailing Misa and Mogi. Kira's kingdom, starring Demagawa, is shown. Mikami uses a death note to kill Demagawa, and it's revealed that he has a Shinigami eyes. We're shown a backstory of Mikami. We get to know his uh, sense of justice. His really strong sense of justice. Nier concludes that Light Yagami is indeed Kira, but just needs proof, and that he's currently giving orders to kill someone. Through Kira's kingdom, Mikami... Um... He doesn't directly ask for Kira's, uh, ask Kira for orders. He kind of indirect. He says things and like indirectly asks Kira for orders. Um, Mikami will wait three days and choose a second spokesperson for Kira. So four days later, Kiyomi Takata, a former college peer of Lights, who I believe had a romantic relationship with him too, or possibly, yeah. Yeah, I think they were like a couple. Becomes a new spokesperson for Kira. Light tells the task force that they should head back for Japan to get Kira. Light then comes up with a plan for him to speak with Takata personally. Nier decides that he and the SPK must also go back to Japan. Nier makes plans to try and get to Takata. So Light contacts Takata and they schedule a meeting at a hotel room. Mello spies on Mogi and Misa and sees that they're both going back to Japan. Mello decides to also go to Japan and tells Matt to go there too. Takata uh, so does these reports as Kira's spokesperson, telling like what Kira wants and whatnot. One of the ideals that she points out conflicts with Light's ideals and feels that... Um, and through this, feels that he must get in contact with Mikami. So the task force uh, sets cameras and bugs in the room, the hotel room that Light's going to meet Takata in. So they meet, and he suggests that she should give her own opinions about Kira when she's on television doing the Kira reports. They agree to meet again tomorrow. So Mikami calls Takata's cell phone. She tells him that she's with a friend, and Mikami tells her to hand the phone to that friend. Mikami suspects that it's, it's God, or the person he calls God, which is Kira, is on the other line. And Light proves him that uh, without exposing himself uh, as Kira, that he is indeed Kira to, to Mikami. He says certain things in the cell phone that only Kira would know. Uh, Light writes a note that the task force can see that says that Takada's bodyguards are going to check the room's room for wires. Uh, the note says that he has no choice but to remove the wires. And then Light reveals to Takata that he is Kira. Light tells Mikami that he will hand notes to Takata with orders that she will give to uh, Mikami. At the end of the volume, Light informs the task force that he's going to pretend to have a, a relationship with Takata in order to get more information about Kira. So, thoughts on volume 10. Um, near it kind of starts with near and the SPK's escape. Uh, I, this is yet kind of another example of what I'm not liking about the direction of Death Notes going. Um, after the death, like after Volume Six, which was like the death of Near, pretty much. Um. It's like, it was clever of Nier to think, oh, hey, these people are just a bunch of hooligans, pretty much. He doesn't use that word, but they're just like, they're not necessarily Kira worshippers, but like, almost like anarchists. And it was smart of, of him to think up of this plan. However, the fact that they are able to execute it, it is just a little too convenient for my taste. Where it's like, oh, hey... Hey, Nier, we just so happen to have buckets of money, <laughs> you know, of cash, of all things. We just have all this cash on, on hand, you know, <laughs> and let's go use it on these guys, you know, this, this mob.
okay, like we have it. Like it just so happened to be there, and Mello just so happened to have a missile. You know, I I, I know I keep going back to that, but it's just it's it's got that same thing. You know, where it's like you're using this like very you just so happen to have this very strong and powerful object item money in this case and at, at your disposal conveniently at your disposal and you're able to use it so it, it just yeah like i said the the idea of doing that it, it's clever but like it's it still lacks that wit. It's like, I don't know if you're really outsmarting anyone per se. Because you have this object of great power, in a sense. In this case, a lot of money. You know, a lot, not just money, a lot of cash in hand. You know, and conveniently have it. So, um, definitely not something that... I'm big on, but, like, at the same time, it's like, I understand, like, how else are they going to escape from this place, you know, in, in a, a relatively clever way, too, you yeah, know, that's the best option that they can go with, um, we're now seeing the growing distrust of light from the other task force members, and that seems to be, uh, a direction that the, uh, that Death Note is taking at this point. Uh, obviously, that happened a lot in in the first six volumes with Al, because Al kept suspecting um, Light of being Kira. But the other task force members, because of what Light was doing, like, he kind of, in a sense, proved that he's not Kira. And then he always had his dad on his side. So, as this, like, voice of reason, too. So, it, it seemed like the task force members just were totally on light side. In this case, now they're not. Um, and now they're also keeping total watch on him. Which makes, changes the dynamic of what light can do. It seems like he cannot contact Mikami that easily with, you know, Aizawa on his back. All the time. Um, speaking of Mikami, new character here. Very, he, he's interesting. You know, I'm glad that they put a backstory to him. That we got to get to know a little bit about him and why he's so obsessed with Kira, calls him God and whatnot. Um, so I I don't know how much we're going to see from this guy. It seems like he's going to be a very important piece of the whole, like, chessboard or the piece of the puzzle, you know. Um, he's obviously a really smart guy. I believe he's a lawyer or prosecutor or something like that. Uh, so he has that going for him. Seems pretty bright. Um, has a really strong sense of justice, but obviously we're already seeing the kinks in the armor. Um, in the sense that Mikami has very similar ideals to Light, but also has some differing ideals as well. We're also shown uh, Takata. Um, it's nice to see them bring her back. She's always she's always liked Light. It's very obvious. She's been something of like. You want to see like the princess of the college or something like that? You know, like the most popular woman in the college, so, um, and Light being the type of guy, one thing that he's really good at, and I explained it before, he's so good at using people, you know, he's good at using Mikami, who totally believes him, he's really good at manip manipulating, uh, Takata, who obviously has a thing for him, and now she's like this go-between, between Light, who, you know, in a sense, I'm not too surprised that Light admitted that, or like, yeah, admitted that he's uh, Kira to her. But now she's this go-between, between like, uh, himself uh, and Mikami. So that should be really interesting too, because it seems like they're going to constantly meet at this hotel room. Nier has uh, 
made some moves. He's going back to Japan. So it looks like, you know, everyone's converging back to Japan. They're in, like, L.A. and, like, and whatnot after the whole thing with Mello. And now it, it's back to Japan. It looks like everything will be settled in Japan. Uh, so that should be interesting. I kind of have to wonder what's going to happen. And with only two more volumes left, too, uh, it, it seems inevitable that there's going to have some level of meetings and whatnot. And, and Nier looks like he has concluded that Light Yagami is Kira. Um, this is fine. However, I, I, I noticed that in these volumes, once again, comparing like the, the first like six volumes of Death Note where they had L and these ones with like Nier and Mellow, um, there's a lot of dialogue. I mean, it's just, I mean, you'll just have pages of Nier just trying to figure things out. I guess that's kind of cool. Um, you know, he's like this super sleuth, the, the heir to L and whatnot. So, I mean, he he comes to these conclusions and, and it makes sense. But, like, I, I can't help but feel that sometimes when I'm reading it, that he's making some pretty big jumps. Like, it's like, you're going from here to there, and it's like, I get, I mean, you're really smart, and, and you're like this super sleuth. I suppose, you know, it's kind of like, you, you kind of have to really suspend your disbelief in a sense of like, okay, I guess he's capable of doing that. So, I mean, he's ult he ultimately concluded that Light Yagami is Kira, which is fine. I mean, it had to happen in a sense that he, he had to find out, like, that L is Light Yagami. And Light, like, by extension, he thinks L is Kira. By extension, Light Yagami is Kira. So, I mean, it kind of had to happen because, like, these two haven't met in person, so it's, there's kind of this idea of, like, he just has to assume a lot in order to reach certain conclusions. In this case, Light Yagami is Kira. Um, it's fine, it's kind of like the direction of these, uh, like, volume 7 to 12. Um, you just see, you see a lot of it, too. So, second last volume. Volume 11. The volume begins with Nier saying that he's going back to Japan. Nier contacts L and tells him that he's back in Japan to capture Kira. He says that the best way to start is with Kiyomi Takada. L tells him that he's already in contact with her. Nier tells L that he can tell her that the SPK's uh, four members are in Japan to capture Kira. So, like, now Light knows that the SPK consists of four members. Um, Nier says that in order to catch Kira, they must get solid proof and must and have him use the notebook and arrest him on the spot. Light meets with Takata. He writes notes on her to suspect everyone near her to be members of the SPK, but, let, but to let them do what they want, uh, yeah, to or what they what the, whatever they like. Mikami will send her a fan letter. Inside it will be five blank sheets of note paper. Once he receives notification from her that she received a fan mail, then he is to stop using the real notebook and to create an exact duplicate, which he will keep using. So he's, apparently, Mikami is going to use the duplicate, if I'm not mistaken, if that's how, um, how I'm reading it. So Light writes a note to Takata that she... Uh, if she writes names down on the paper, that person will die. That is Kira's power. She is to write the names of the people who are announced on NHN. She leaves the hotel room and gives Mikami the message from Kira. The news announces that Takata has chosen four female bodyguards, and one of them is Lidner, so one of the SPK. And it's it's kind of obvious that she's like SPK because she's like former CIA and whatnot. Like all her credentials just point to someone that would be in the qualified for the SPK. 
So Light already concludes that Lindner is SBK. Misa sees Takata and gets angry at her. She says that she'll kick her, but Lindner intervenes. Nier questions why Kira chose Kiyomi Takata. He concludes that she wasn't chosen by the real Kira, uh, who he calls El Kira, but by the current Kira, which Nier calls X Kira. Nier watches all the programs that Takata has been in and sees Teru Mikami. He concludes that Teru Mikami is X Kira, cannot and he cannot contact the real Kira or L Kira, and coincidentally just chose Ki uh, Takata to be Kira's new spokesperson. Nier concludes that El Kira and X Kira are contacting each other through Takata. So, one of the SBK members, Giovanni, is tailing Mikami. Mogi gets a call from Takata, uh, asking if Misa wants to have dinner with her, and she agrees. At the dinner, Misa tells Takata that she's going to announce her engagement to Light at the New Year's music show hosted by Takata. Uh, Mikami uses the notebook on a train on a man harassing a woman. As Giovanni watches, the man dies um, in front of Giovanni. Light visits Takata in the hotel room again. He gives her a note saying that Kira needs to be arrested. Um, Nier starts to ponder about the Shinigami. They show Mikami on screen and reading his lips he says, um, Mikami saying this, that Shinigami ever since he handed me the no notebook he hasn't appeared. Nier comes up with a plan for one of them to touch the notebook. Uh, Giovanni is chosen to touch the notebook. It's between him and um, like the commander, his name's Ruster, but Giovanni is chosen. Misa has apparently not arrived to the New Year's music show. Lindner and Commander Ruster have taken Misa and Mogi. Al contacts Nier. Nier admits that he has taken Misa and Mogi into custody. Mogi agreed to it, and they're staying at what looks like a hotel room or something like that. So Giovanni goes to the gym that Mikami goes to and searches his locker to find a notebook. Giovanni touches it, but no Shinigami appears. Light sees Takata. In the note, he tells her, after T confirms everything, have T tell you about it. Then once you get that, send me a message saying, I want to see you ASAP. Or the message actually says, I want to see you. And she's supposed to be, do that as soon as possible on either phone or email. So Nier tells Giovanni to get a hold of Mikami's notebook and take photographs of all of its pages. Nier looks at the photographs of the pages. He sees that he can now put his plan into action. Nier then has Giovanni do one last thing, but we aren't told what it is. Giovanni confirms Nier that he did everything that he said. Mikami gives a message on the phone to Takati saying, I've confirmed it. Takata gives Light a text message saying, I want to see you. In a monologue, Light says that he knew that Nier would find Mikami and make his move. But Light knew from the very beginning what his plan was going to be. So Nier contacts L. Nier tells him that he wants to meet him and that it's something he must show him pertaining to the Kira case. Investigators from both sides are to be there, so SPK and Task Force. They are to meet at a warehouse in Daikoku Wharf. Communication equipment is prohibited once they enter. Somebody apart from L is to bring the notebook from headquarters. The date and time is three days um, from now at one o'clock. Light meets Takata and gives her a note telling her the date, time, and location of the meeting. Uh, so Takata leaves the hotel but is attacked by Matt, who's Mello's henchman. So at the end of the volume, Mello kidnaps Takata on a motorcycle. So, thoughts on volume 11. We're finally getting the plans from both Near and Light. There is some, you know, cat and mouse here going on. Like, it seems like both of them have an idea of what each other's plans are. Light seems positive. He knows what Near's doing, but Near's also sure of what Light's doing. And it looks like they're going to converge at this one final meeting place. So, I mean, it, this volume's, you know, really about setting things up. Like, it's the second to last volume. You know, 
stuff is going to go down next volume the series is going to end so right now it's just we're, we're putting all the pieces into place both near and light are putting the pieces into place uh, and that's what this volume is doing light still using Takata um, you know there's messages just going on and, and whatnot Takata seems seemed a bit uh, obviously a bit frightened by the fact that like you know writing on these pieces of notebook paper can kill people and for good reason but uh it seems like Takata has been what's on board we see a lot of Giovanni he's stealing Mikami and you know I can't help but feel that that's gonna play a big role in this you know final meeting you know there's plans in the place Giovanni is supposed to be doing a lot of things He's aware of the notebook, getting a hold of the notebook, and aware of that Mikami has been what's ex Kira. You know, one thing that's always um, put on um, or emphasized is that Mikami is always on schedule. He's a very strict guy. Um, seems like he. Uh, you know, he goes to the gym at this time. He goes to work at this time. It seems like he writes in the notebook at this time. Um, and with this, you know, this many names and whatnot. So, you know, and with that, I guess Giovanni was able to infiltrate that locker. Um, I don't know if we can see that as a strength with Mikami or a weakness. And then, you know, at the end of the volume... Mello finally made a move, you know, what he's going to do with Takata, I don't know, you know, Takata is just, kind of, she's not, at this point, she's not like a huge piece to the puzzle, you know, so it's like, Mello needs to get a kid, you know, he's still at a ra race with Nier to get to uh, Kira, I just, I don't know if Takata's, I, I don't know what capturing Takata is really going to do uh, in that regard. So, let's go to volume 12, the final volume. Volume be begins with Matt getting shot down and killed. Mello takes Takata to the back of a truck and drives to the building. With the piece of the death note paper, Takata writes Mello's real name and he dies. Uh, Takata contacts Mikami for names of those who are to be killed and he gives her the names. Light writes on a piece of death note paper that Takata will commit suicide and burn everything around her. Aizawa is given the notebook to take to the meeting place. Mikami apparently is taken to train somewhere. You, you'd think probably to the meeting place, but you don't know. Sure. So the task force, including uh, Light, goes to the warehouse where Nier and the SPK are waiting for them. Nier is wearing one of L's mask, but Nier takes the mask off. Nier saw, says that X Kira is already here. Mikami is on the other side of a door and peeking through it to use the Shinigami eyes. He writes names down on the notebook. Nier says that he tampered with the notebook. He says that they replaced all the pages. Light in a monologue says that he knew it all along. He says that the one that he tampered with was a fake that he had Mikami prepare. The one that Mikami is writing in is the real one. He ordered Mikami to use the fake notebook outside on purpose and have his agent witness it in plain sight. So Giovanni to witness it in plain sight. So they ask Teru Mikami to come inside. They count to 40 seconds and no one dies. They then apprehend Mikami who calls Light God. Nier shows them the notebook and points out that Light Yagami's name is not written on it and that Mikami called him God. Light accuses Nier of this being a trap and not even knowing Mikami. Nier says that he tampered with pages from both the real notebook and the fake note and the fake notebook. He replaced the pages of the real notebook completely. Nier shows them that he has the real notebook. 
Nier also reveals that he can see the Shinigami, Ryuk. And Nier then shows them that uh, Mikami wrote Takata's name on the notebook a minute after the time that Light wrote it down. And that she committed suicide and that she's going to uh, burn everything around her, apparently. Giovanni took the real notebook from a safe deposit box that Mikami had. Apparently, Mikami does everything in schedule, but going to the safe deposit box was out of the ordinary for Mikami, who's, who runs such a tight ship. Nier credits Mello for creating this situation and says that both he and Mello can surpass L. Nier points out all the evidence that Light is Kira. Light then admits to everyone that he is indeed Kira. Light then gives this huge speech saying that he's God and that they need, you know, Kira in the world. Nier calls him a mass murderer and says that the notebook is the worst murder weapon in the history of mankind. Light questions if the notebooks they have in their possession are real. He then walks a few steps and takes a piece of the death note paper out from his watch and begins writing a name down. Matsuda shoots Light's hand and talks about Light's father, Suicho Yagami. Light then makes a speech about his father and starts to finish writing Nier's real name, Nate River, with his own blood. Before he could finish the last letter, the R, Matsuda shoots him in the body. So, pretty much on the ground, Light has this total meltdown. I mean, he's just crying out for help from everyone, from Misa to Takata to whoever. Uh, Light then turns to Ryuk for help, but Ryuk write, uh, writes Light Yagami's name on the death note. Light Yagami then dies by a heart attack. So, in the final chapter, chapter 108, called Finis, Ide and Matsuda walk the streets. Aizawa is now the chief of the NBA. Roger is the new Watari from uh, Whammy's house. Uh, and Nier is the new L. And he asks Aizawa for help on a case. Matsuda has a theory that Nier killed Mikami using the death note. As Mikami went crazy in jail 10 days after the incident and died. Um, so that's his, that's his theory. It's revealed that Nier burned both notebooks on the spot. Pretty much after Light died. So at the end of the series, a line of hooded uh, Kira followers are on a mountain with candles. Misa, who's also in a hood, comes through the middle of this like procession and lays a candle down and says, Kira, our savior, and looks up at the moon. So, thoughts on volume 12 and the series as a whole. You can't really talk about this manga series without looking at the first half, and I, I, I always bring it up to you, volumes 1 to 6 with L and the second half. Um... In my personal opinion, the first half is a lot better. Um, I don't really like Nier. Or, and like I was really indifferent to Mello. I think that they weren't... They weren't particularly personable. Mir, or Mello had more of a personality. Nier was just kind of there. And they keep pointing out that like... Nier and Mello are two halves of like L's personality where like you know Mello's the guy that's a little more reckless they'll take action and whatnot or Nier is more intuitive introverted and whatnot uh, I'll say this with the first half which is volumes 1 through 6 uh, it, it seemed a little it had a lot of grand ideas and used them quite well uh, the first half I liked it better because they used more of the notebook in clever ways. By the time volume 7 happens, volume 8, everyone has touched the notebook. You know, they also, you know, the notebook was really big, the death note. And, you know, you take pieces of paper from it and kill people with that. You can time when people died and whatnot, and that's cool. You know, and they use that to some extent from 7 to 12, but, like, the 
specialness of the notebook and what it can do kind of dies off after volume six. The other thing that the first half, one through six, used to a lot was the Shinigami. I mean, you, you had Ryuk, who he would use to like find wires and stuff like that, and almost like, and you know, they'd play with the ownership using the Shinigami. And then you had Rem in there, who ultimately killed L, you know, and, and using Rem's feelings for Misa and, and whatnot. The second half of the volume was just more, or of the volume of like the story was more about like light versus near and mellow. You know, you, you had Sido in volumes like what, seven to eight? He just goes away. And then Ryuk just kind of like fades into the background until the very last, you know. Or the, like the second to last chapter where he kills Light. But by then it's like Ryuk's not. He's not really pestering anyone. He's not eating the apples or, or whatnot. He's just kind of there in the background. It, it's it, it, like it, it lost a lot of that luster that volumes 1 through 6 had. Because like I said they just use that notebook so much more creatively. They use the Shinigami, and it's a lot more believable. One thing I kept pointing out with the the later volumes is like, oh hey, they used a missile, you know? They they have the helicopter, um, you know? They're using this mafia. Uh, the president's getting of the U.S. is getting involved. Oh, we just so happen to have this like bucket, you know, to have these like buckets of cash in hand and it's like th there's almost a sense of shortcutting you know it's like oh, okay well you know with the notebook and the shinigami it's like okay those are kind of creative you know you're, you're manipulating the stuff that it that's in hand and the second half it's kind of like you know it's like you just so happen to, you know, like these characters like Mellow and Nier just so happen to have these like, you know, items in hand, whether it's like a lot of money or a missile, you know, and it's like, okay, I don't, you know, I, it just, it, you kind of lose the wit that was involved. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, it's so good. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's so good until the end, but, like, it, it does seem like the first half had the better ideas. And then by volume 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they didn't have as many ideas. So you saw a lot more monologues going on. You saw a lot more of Nier just kind of figuring out, and he has to kind of reach in order to get to certain conclusions and whatnot. You know, it wasn't as, and since Nier and, and Light never actually met, you know, it's just more of like, okay, I'm gonna make a reach here. I'm gonna make a re Nier had to like kind of reach in order to get to certain conclusions. Um, the thing with Nier too. I said before, I'll say it again. I don't like Nier. I just, there's, he, he wasn't a very likable character. Um, he's not very personable. Didn't want to seem to make friends. L was, like, L was almost, like, you gotta like L because, you know, I said it before, but it's like, he seemed to authentically find Light Yagami to be a friend. You know, and... What's kind of cool with the first half, with volumes one through six, when, when Light lost his memories of uh, the Death Note, they did become friends. Light and um, L were friends, <laughs> you know, like legit friends. And then like L even says like, "Oh, Light is the very first friend I've ever had," you know. And then when Misa becomes a friend, his friend, he's like. I made another friend like what like he, he's so like proud of that you know <laughs> he's just such a weird guy 
and like quirky, you know. And, and it kind of goes back to what I'm saying about forcing things. It's like they try they tried to make near a bit quirky, but they forced it upon you in a sense where it's like, okay, we'll give him this quirk where like he likes to play with toys, you know, or he, he'll you'll just see him play with like these toys and whatnot, build a Christmas tree. You know, have this like goofy smile when he think when he when he looks like he has the upper hand, but it's kind of like okay, this is all kind of forced. You know, it's like okay, he plays with toys. You know, Mello eats chocolate. You know, and it's like that's his that's his gimmick. You know, and it's like instead of organically making them, you know, into like quirky like really quirky characters and just organically making them have much of a personality you're kind of just giving them these gimmicks you know it's like the guy that eats chocolate you know um the guy that plays with toys you know it's like you just gave them these like weird gimmicks uh that aren't so organic in order to give these guys some like quirks i, I don't I can't say I, I was really fond of that. You know, Nier claimed that Nier and L together became as good as L. And I guess, I mean, they keep pointing out that Nier and Mello are like separate parts of L and whatnot. And I, I can see it, you know. So, but once again, because of that, they don't really have their own identity. As far as the volumes go, uh, you know. I guess we can talk about things like Light's Meltdown. And I... In a sense, it's... Characteristically uncharacteristic of him. You know, because he's such a calm guy and whatnot. But, like... And in a sense, it, it, there's some... like I guess, is it catharsis? And seeing Light break down like that. Because, like... It's not in his personality to do that. We saw it once where he just had this total like when L introduced himself and then he's in his room and then he just kind of has this like meltdown. This was a huge meltdown to the point where like he, he got stupid and then, in a sense that makes it really in, uncharacteristic because it's like I understand he, you know maybe those that didn't agree with Light ultimately wanted to see this but it's kind of like where's Misa where's Takata it's like you killed him and, and it's like come on man like in a sense it's like I get it I, I guess he's so freaked out by what happened and freaked out by the fact that he, he lost that he almost just kind of got stupid I guess in a sense but like once again it's like characteristic in the sense that he got the meltdown because he hates losing and we've seen it before it's an established character trait of his but it's also uncharacteristic in the fact that he got to the point where like he melted down to the point where it's like it almost seemed unbelievable that he it's like where's Miso how can she not be here you know and like where's Takata who I killed and it's like come on you know um, the other thing that I, I found a bit stretch to be, of a stretch to believe is that I know that they established Mikami as this guy that's on schedule and that really thinks like Light and whatnot, but it's like Light writes that Takata is going to commit suicide and burn everything around her, and it's like it just so happened that. Mikami thought the same thing, and it's like, I get it, you establish this character as knowing what Light is thinking, so I guess you can buy that, that would actually happen, but at the same time, like, it's kind of, it, it, it's a bit of a stress there, in my personal opinion. Um... The ending with Light eventually dying by Ryuk. I mean, that was good. That was actually really good. Um, I I believe Ryuk said, like in the beginning, that he was 
pretty much the one that's going to kill Light and whatnot. And he was, you know, he was in the background for so long, too, that it just, it, it made sense for Light to die in that way. It's, it's very poetic, you know, like, he's killed all these people with the de Death Note. He dies by the Death Note, you know. He, you know, him killing people is... He just, he does it, like, on a daily basis, you know? And then when it's his turn to die, he doesn't want to die. He's crying not to die. And that that actually makes sense, you know? It's, it's knowing Light's character up to this point, knowing how proud he is, how egotistical he is, how he hates losing and whatnot. Um, he didn't even want to, he didn't want to trade the Shinigami eyes. He said that to do that trade, he says that's out of the question, so, like, him dying by Ryuk, and him just really not wanting to die, it, it, in the way that, in his way, or, like, I don't know how to explain it, but just, like, him not wanting to die, it's very characteristic of him. Um, we also saw the epilogue, um, I like that procession at the end. That was really good. That was really well done because, you know, in a world without Kira, like, there were people that believed that Kira was righteous, was justice. So it made sense that they would have these people mourning the loss of Kira. You know, they're still there. It's not like, you know, it's not like they died or anything like that. Um, the theory from Matsuda, um, I guess in a sense kind of covers something of a whole that patches something up because it, there is something almost uncharacteristic here and, and it kind you kind of like, if you want to question it, you can, but it, it, it's, it's like light is such a smart guy. He knows that Nier's a smart guy too. How did he not have like a contingency plan, you know, just in case something happened, like ripping out some pieces of the real notebook just in case this happened or something to that nature. And then Matza kind of provides us, oh, well, you know, Nier could have wrote in the notebook that Mikami was to do this and then eventually die. And if it's written in the notebook, then he cannot go against it in a sense so I mean it's something of a it's kind of patches up a question that a viewer or a reader may have um, it does go back to the idea of like and I guess you can say it in hindsight may you know light should have had some sort of like Plan B, just in case plan A didn't work. And, and, and there were some simple plan Bs. You know, it's like, hey, I'm going to rip out some pieces of the notebook just in case that, like, this fake thing, you know, all this switching doesn't, doesn't work. Or, like, the other thing they mentioned was testing out the notebook before they went to the warehouse. Why didn't you do that? Oh, well, maybe Nia wrote his name down and, you know, he wouldn't do that. So... Uh, there's that with uh, the epilogue. Um, I guess the big question, though, with Death Note, at, at the very end of the day, one of the bigger questions is, was Kira indeed a savior, or was he a mass murderer? You know, um, it's never answered. Um, and by the end of the volume, it, it's... It's like pretty much the pertinent question that you know that's in hand because as Matt or Ide and Aizawa are walking through the streets, they kind of see that man that you know this world's kind of messed up. You know, like things aren't right. Like people are acting in a way that are that causes delinquent behavior and whatnot, and that is threatening to society. You know, and there are people that still believe in Kira. Um, so maybe he was a savior, 
You know, I don't have an answer. You know, all I know is like, um, we got to go through this journey with light. He at the by the very end of the uh, of the volume, I mean, it it couldn't have gone it anyway, but him not becoming God, pretty much. You know, it, it it's be. I guess you know if they really want to go, you know, creator want to be crazy and, and well, not crazy, but just do something different. It's like have light win, and then he rules the world, and that's how it ends. But like, I just. I can't see that being a realistic ending, you know. Um, and it, it, it's cool with light because he he will question himself. He'll be like, "Hey, you know, he this is what I think Kira's thinking." You know, he knows what he's doing is evil, but he knows he's doing it for a greater sense of justice. That's and that was light's thinking, you know. And in that sense, it's like, "Hey, I, I'm not a mass murderer." I, I, I'm the savior, you know, the, some people need to go, you know, and, and that's the big, you know, is Kira savior or mass murderer? I, I don't know, it's up to the reader to decide. So, that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to these manga reviews. Next week, I will review uh, Donna B. Arcana, Volumes 1 to 3, have a story reading of Homesickness, pages 4 to 6, and a movie review for The Devotion of Suspect X. Thank you, and until next time.